I will be preaching from the subject today, the reality of eternity. The reality of eternity. Whether some folk elect to believe it or not, eternity is real. It's real. Eternity is not something left or come, has come about because of mankind's imagination. Eternity is real. If you will turn in your Bibles to the book of St. Matthew chapter 7 verses 13 through 14 stand if you will and I will read these two verses. Matthew chapter 7 verses 13 and 14. Jesus here is speaking. He's teaching. And he's talking about the way to heaven. The way. Jesus says you can enter God's kingdom only through the narrow gate. The highway to hell is broad. And its gate is wide for the many who choose the easy way. Verse 14. But the gateway to life, eternal life, is small. And the road is narrow. And only a few find it. Only a few find it. You may be seated. This message today is designed. The purpose of it is to encourage the decision-making process as it relates or pertains to eternity. If you never hear about eternity preached or taught, you may not give it much thought. But this message will encourage your decision-making process as it relates to eternity. Heaven and hell are not new subjects to us. We've heard about them both ever since we were little and old enough to hear someone teach or preach or talk about heaven and hell. They are, in fact, two of the elite topics that receive the greatest decision in Christianity along with salvation, faithfulness, and grace, just to name a few. Eternity was also a hot topic in the time of Christ Jesus. There was as much religious confusion then as there is today about eternity. Eternity is no less, it no less affects man's concept of the afterlife. In Matthew chapter 7, Jesus makes it quite clear concerning the reality of eternity. Eternity is real. And eternity, to put it mildly, is for a long, long time. It will never end. And the paths that lead to eternity 
are real. In our text today, we're going to talk about, I will be speaking about heaven and hell. We don't mind hearing the subject regarding heaven because we think about the pleasantries of eternal life with God, with Christ, with the heavenly host. We think about being with family and friends and relatives and acquaintances that have died in Christ and gone to be with the Lord. So we don't mind thinking about heaven. But hell is a place that we don't like to think about or talk about or discuss. But let me tell you, hell is just as real as heaven is. Amen. There is within every man, woman and child, a yearning for peace deep down inside of us. Things may be uh, un at, uh, not at rest in our life and all through our life there is seemingly an inner yearning for peace even between nations between countries someone is always trying to bring about peace tranquility and happiness some say this comes from living in a world that is sin fallen. Others say it is a product of our salvation. I personally think it's a yearning of our God given souls to return to the place of origin where God created man in his image and likeness. He gave man, he made man so uh, uh, humanly speaking. We were made in God's image in that we were created holy, spiritually speaking, created holy. Man was given a soul, a mind, a spirit. And this is just the yearning, the desire of our souls that came from God to return to the place of origin. Whatever the cause, the fact remains that the desire to be in a place and condition of peace and joy is an inherent part of each of us. We inherited that at birth or yearning to go home to be with God. Amen. Amen. Now there are some people that may live in denial and or open rebellion that do not believe in heaven or hell or eternity. But the fact remains the same. As God's people, we know of such a place, amen, amen, where our souls can return. We know of such a place, this place Jesus calls paradise. He told the thief on the cross, this day thou shalt be with me in paradise, heaven. My father's home, Jesus referred to them as heaven, paradise, and my father's home. This is where God lives. That's the abode of God. Heaven is the abode of God. A perfect place filled with his glory and his majesty. Praise the Lord. Throughout the New Testament, heaven is portrayed as a place of peace, perfection, joy, and praise where God will wipe 
away all of our tears and sorrow. And there will be no more sorrow or pain. Praise our Heavenly Father. He's worthy. Amen. Amen. Heaven is a place where we, all of us, that are saved, born again, redeemed, blood washed, we live in the very presence of God. Can you imagine the joy of living in the very presence of God, our Heavenly Father, our Creator? How awesome will that be? Praise his name. Amen. Seeing him as he is. We know no man has ever seen God. But the word of God said we will be in his presence. And we will see him as he is. Amen. God is a spirit. And they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. But there's going to come a day. That we will see God as he is. But a mighty God we serve. We will bask in the radiant glow of his love. Jesus made us that promise in the book of St. John 14. When he said. When he was comforting the disciples. And that comfort also applies to us today in spite of our struggles in trying to live obedient to the word of God in spite of the difficulty we sometimes experience trying to be faithful to the word of God Jesus says let me comfort you he says amen I go to prepare a place for you I'm going to prepare it. And I will come back and take you with me for eternity. What comforting words. Jesus has gone on to heaven. But he kind of promised to come back for us to take us with him to be with him for eternity. In 2 Corinthians 5 and 1, I'm going to give you a description of heaven and hell. This one is heaven. We have a building from God. I have several scriptures. It begins in 5 and 1. Christians, we're considered a, 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 a building with God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. That is for Christians to enjoy and be a part of God. Jesus has provided for us a building from God, not a physical building, not a house that's made with hands, but a home that's eternal in the heavens. Revelations 21 and 2 calls it the new Jerusalem. Heaven is the new Jerusalem. That is what the saved, the redeemed, those that have repented of their sins. This is what they have to look forward to. This is the eternity that man finds at the end of a straight and narrow path. But there is another place, a place called hell. It's real. It exists. And it's there for people that choose to go there. The word of Jesus teaches, uh, uses, to, that he describes Jesus to describe the place called hell is Gehenna. Gehenna to his original audience that he referred to in the valley of Hinnom. A place just south of Jerusalem where the city dumped its garbage. That 
place was called Gehenna. It was referred to as Gehenna. Household waste and dead animals. This is what hell was compared to. This is where they dumped household waste and dead animals. It was their incinerator, to use a modern term. And it burned continuously. And the wind carried the stench of it for miles. When you think about it, this is a fitting image of the place where the wicked and the sinful will be sent. Every soul, unclean, nasty, every foul, unclean, nasty thing that was sent to Gehenna in the first century. And so it is with the eternal place that we call hell. Yet in spite of the biblical fact of hell, the Bible teaches that there is a hell. And in spite of it, it might surprise you to know that the more people believe that there are more people that believe in heaven than they do hell. You see, it's almost like we have shut eternity and hell out of our minds. We don't want to think of such a place. We don't want to think of such a place that we could end up. God is a good God. He's not going to send anybody to hell. And they think because God is so merciful. And God is such a God of grace and love. God is not going to send anybody to hell. No, he's not. Anyone that goes to hell will go because they choose to be there. The word of God says it's not his will that any should be lost, but that all should come to a newness of life. God would love to see everyone in heaven. But he's not going to force that upon us. More people believe in heaven because they want to. They shut hell out of their mind and their thoughts. They don't want to think about it. They don't want to be condemned with their sins. They don't want to think that there's a place of torment and damnation for the rest of eternity. Why do they think that? Well, maybe because modern day theology and some modern day preachers don't want to preach about it because they say it's not a popular subject or it's not politically correct. Maybe it is because some feel that hell is not possible because God is an all-loving God and would not send people to such a place because he loves them too much. Yet, whatever the excuse may be or the one you may choose, the fact remains that hell is a real place. It exists. Just as heaven is a real place. It exists. And Jesus promised that mankind would end up in both places. Some folk will die and go to hell. And some that will die and go to heaven. For the next few minutes, let me just speak to you as we take a look at the reality of a biblical hell, biblically taught, and what it will be like. Revelations 20 and 14 calls it the lake of fire. 
Matthew 25 and 41 refers to it as everlasting fire. And Revelation 21 and 8 says it's a lake that burns with fire and brimstone. That's a description of hell. Matthew 13, 41 through 42 says it's a furnace of fire. This is biblical scripture describing hell. There are some people that would rather stick their thumbs in their ears and not hear this preached about. But it's real. It's a reality. It is biblically taught. Matthew 25 and 30. Oh, Matthew 13, 41 and 4 through 42. Not only refers to it as a furnace of fire, but there will be weeping and wailing and gnashing of teeth. Matthew 25 and 30 calls it outer darkness, weeping and gnashing of teeth. Second Peter 2 4 calls it chains of darkness. Jude 1 13 says it's blackness of darkness. Blackness of darkness. Doesn't get any blacker. Doesn't get any blacker or any darker. Second Thessalonians Chapter 1, verse 9 says it's a place of everlasting destruction. Revelation 20, 14, 21, and 8 calls hell the second death. The inhabitants of hell. 1 Corinthians 6, 9 through 10. And Revelation 21 and 8. Let me just read that for you. 1 Corinthians 6, 9 through 10. These are some of the people that will inhabit hell. Don't you know that those who do wrong will have no share in the kingdom of God. Don't fool yourselves. Those who indulge in sexual sin, who are idol worshipers, adulterers, male prostitutes, the King James Version referred to them as effeminate, that applies to me. Effeminate. Men acting like women. Male prostitutes. Homosexuals. These are people that will inhabit hell. Thieves. Greedy people. Drunkards. Abusers and swindlers. None of these will have a share in the kingdom of God. Now in contrast to heaven, which is a place that Jesus promised to prepare for us, amen, Jesus is making it possible. And Paul witnessed to it as our home prepared with God. Jesus says hell is a place prepared for the devil and his angels in Matthew 25, 40, 41. We do not belong in hell. We were not created to inhabit hell. We belong in heaven. God created us in his image and likeness and prepared a place for us. In conclusion, of today's message. Many years ago, 
This is a true story. A man conned, fooled, or tricked his way into the orchestra of the emperor of China. Although he could not play a single note, whatever the group practiced or performed, he would hold his flute against his lips as if he was playing. Pretending to play, but not making a sound. He received a modest salary and enjoyed a comfortable living. Then one day the emperor requested a solo from each of the musicians. The flutist got nervous. There wasn't enough time to learn the instrument, how to play it. He pretended to be sick, but the royal physician wasn't fooled. On the day of his solo performance, the man had lost all hope of fooling the emperor. The imposter took poison and killed himself. The explanation given for his suicide led to a phrase that I think most of us have heard. It found its way into the English language. And this is a phrase. He refused to face the music. Whenever someone doesn't want to face up to something, that's where this phrase came from. This musical imposter refused to face up to the music. He couldn't play for the emperor. So he committed suicide. Today, a lot of church members are like that. A lot of professed Christians are like that. They know how to look the part. They can play the part. They can act the part. They can come to church. They can give. They can stand up and clap their hands and sing. But they are imposters. They are not real children of the king. Amen. Amen. People can pretend, pretend to be a part of God's orchestra. I'm one of them Christians. I belong to that church. I give my dues every month. They just blend in with the crack. They just hang around with the church members. And they go through the motions. But their heart has not experienced forgiveness. No one notices here because they just look like everyone else. They say the right things. They go to the right places. They hang out with the right people. And they enjoy the comfort of being accepted by their peers in the crowd. But there will come a day when we will be required to give an account of our behavior, our conduct, our lives. I can hear Jesus now saying, what did you do? Well, Jesus, you know I did this. Well, God, you remember when I went to church once a month. Well, God, you, you understood my heart. I tried to do the best I can. But there's going to come a day when we're going to have to face up to the music. One day, you will be separated from everything in this life, from your loved ones, from everything. On that day, you will stand before God alone and give an account for your life and the deeds that you have done, your decisions, and whether or not you were tapped 
into the living water. You see, everybody that cries, Lord, Lord, is not going to be saved. Everybody that plays the part that looks religious is not going to heaven. And for those folk when they stand before God, expecting to hear the words, well done, thy good and faithful servant, they will be sorely disappointed. Amen. For they will hear the words, depart from me. Ye workers of iniquity, I never knew ye. Heaven is real. Hell is real. Reality. There's the reality of eternity. Eternity is real. How you live in this life and how you die determines where you will spend eternity. My prayer, my hope is that you live so. That your relationship today is such with God. That you've been forgiven. You've asked God's forgiveness. You've asked him to wash you by the blood of Jesus. He has redeemed you. Set you free. And made you a child of the King. Then you will hear the words enter into the joy of the Lord. May God bless you today. May heaven smile upon you. Remain faithful to your ministry calling. Be faithful to your church. Be faithful in your worship. Be faithful in your giving. Be faithful in your living. And God will reward you for your labor.